Tony, you are France's, I think it's fair to say, most successful basketball player. And in the same year that you are being enshrined in the Hall of Fame, the number one pick is another Frenchman in Victor Wenbanyama. How have you seen the evolution of French basketball over your career? Well, first of all, I'm very happy and very proud to see uh, like the, the impact and uh, uh, I always took it very seriously to be a good ambassador for, for French basketball. It was one of my main motivation when I first arrived in the NBA. I wanted to um, show that French basketball, French people, we can play. <laughs> and I wanted to earn the respect from the Americans because I know how proud they are about basketball. And my dad is American, so uh, I knew what I had to do, you know, to, to be successful. And he helped me a lot for the mental side. And, and I wanted to uh, try to, you know, show that the little kids uh, from France can go all the way to the NBA. That was my main motivation. It was my big dream. And now a little kid from France was the number one pick. He's been called the best prospect potentially ever. I see the smile on your face. You've known him. He, he won a championship with your team in France. You've gotten to know him over the years. What do you expect of Victor? It feels like a full circle, you know, <laughs> like it's funny, like, like uh, when he came to, to Asvel, like uh, uh, we always talked about the NBA, he, like he was like determined, you know, uh, he's going to be like the number one pick and uh, it was nice to, to meet his family and his, uh, his sister, his brother, uh, we have a lot of history. And so when the draft came, I was like, it's crazy. When they got the number one pick, I was like, wow, it was like destiny. You know, I felt like it was meant to be. Uh, and he wanted to come to the Spurs, like his whole family wanted him to go to San Antonio. And so when it happened, it was just unbelievable. And I was very happy for him. And now with all the expectation and everything that is happening, it worries me a little bit sometimes, you know, because those expectations are crazy, you know, calling him, like you said, the best prospect and comparing him to LeBron or Michael or, or Timmy. That's a big shoes, you know, to, to fill. And so uh, I wish him the best, you know, he's going to have his own journey and he needs to stay himself and uh, he's Victor and he's like nobody else is this Victor. And hopefully he can be successful and bring us, bring us a lot of championships. Well, you know a little something about bringing championships to San Antonio. In 2001, you were the 28th pick and you talked about wanting to potentially change the perception, earn the respect of Americans. What were the expectations or the perception that was put on you at that point and how did they change over time? Well, for me, it was no expectation. <laughs> so it was very different from Victor because back then you have to put in perspective, it was not a lot of Europeans and it was no European point guards. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I need to try to become the first European point guard to, to make it. And so it started like crazy at my draft. Uh, I was drafted 28, like you said, and so at 21, I remember Boston, uh, Chrissy from the NBA, she comes to me and my dad, she gives me the Celtic caps and she's like, yeah, the Boston Celtics gonna draft you. And 45 seconds, she comes back, take the cap <laughs> from me and she's like, oh, they changed their mind. And so that was my welcoming to the NBA. It was very different <laughs> from Victor. <laughs> and so when I arrived, I remember talking with Pop and I was like, man, I wanna show everybody, you know, like I was so motivated, yeah. you know? So it was very different. We had to, you know, open doors. And so I was very blessed that Pop uh, uh, threw me in the fire and gave me the starting job very early in my career after five games. And um, every day, you know, I have to thank him, you know, that he took a chance, you know, on me and on the European point guard. You, it, it's, it's pretty storybook that you were entering the Hall of Fame in the same year. It's the first year. time, first time ever. First time that a coach and a player yeah. enters the, the, the same year. And so it's pretty special to me. Um, because all the connections that I have with everybody, because Pau, I've been playing against him since I'm a kid. Dirk, same thing. I went to Dirk's jersey retirement. Yep. Uh, D-Wade, I played twice against him in the mm -hmm. finals. Uh, Becky Hammond, not a lot of people know that, but she's like my big sister. We're very close. Uh, she played in San Antonio, obviously, many years, and we have a great relationship. And then Coach Pop, so it's a lot of connections. Yeah. And so to me, it's an unbelievable class. Yeah, there's all these, these branches of this basketball tree that you all have built, but so many of those branches, they stem from Greg Popovich in many ways. Is there a moment or a story that signifies to you why he is in the Basketball Hall of Fame, aside from all of the on the, the resume accolades. 
But the, the, like you said, the obvious everybody knows. Uh, I think what makes him special is like off the court and all the relationships that he built and the Spurs tree that you can see now with all those coaches being successful uh, that was on the pop and now they're blossoming, you know, Steve Kerr, Mike Brown, and it goes on the list. And so I'm very happy and honored to, to go in the Hall of Fame with him. You only played one, one season outside of San Antonio with Charlotte. Getting that outside perspective on the dynasty of the San Antonio Spurs, what did that make you realize? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need to go out to realize. Yeah. I, I knew already, I never took it for granted, you know, uh, what we had with the Spurs and how we, as a player, everybody, me, Timmy, Bruce, Manu, we were built different, you know, we just wanted to, to win and, and nobody let our ego be above the, the team. Mm -hmm. I, I did it because I wanted to spend time with my idol. You know, uh, I was excited, you know, to, to go. And uh, it, it was like full circle to me to, uh, you know, it's a say that in, in the US that uh, you should never meet your idol. But uh, for me, it was different. It was awesome to spend some time with Michael Jordan and playing with my little brother, Nicolas Batum. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to experience something different, not because I, w I didn't appreciate everything that I had with the Spurs. Yeah. It's just I wanted to do it for my last year. You, you had something pretty special in San Antonio with Tim Duncan, with Manu Ginobili in particular. You helped them get into the Hall of Fame. How did they help you? Ooh, they made my job easy, that's for sure. Uh, to me, Timmy is the best power forward ever, mm -hmm. and Manu is the most unique player I ever played with. And so um, when you have that, uh, it's a good start, you know, uh, especially with Timmy. He's the most unselfish uh, superstar that I ever played with. Get ready, let's get into it. All right, oh man, look, a rookie Tim Duncan catches the lob. That's a crazy lob. The wingspan is insane. Oh That's wow. off of a Tony Parker uh, pass. Then Tony Parker here, the steal. Who says point oh, guards can't get up? And the slam, one of just four good. career dunks for him, but you know, it counts. <laughs> and then, oh, 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 2014. Saw that one. Manu in the finals, y'all were there, y'all oh, were there. Over Chris Bosh. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're right, uh, Ramona, over Chris Bosh. All right, then we got Duncan with the handle. Post Come on, positionless. Cross the LeBron. <laughs> I'm saying, right? <laughs> uh, little Tony Parker here. Oh, Seattle cool. in the 05 playoffs. Woo-hoo-hoo. That's when we started to realize how good he was. Yep. I can remember the guys in the park doing that move, and it took me a minute to figure out how to defend it. Oh, oh, and then that one, Manu, Lakers, 05 as well, crossed over right down the gutter. It's like right you never think he's going to make lane. it, but he does. Manu with hair, too. Don't <laughs> well, forget the Lakers hair, Monica. was jumping. Uh, that's crazy, right? All right, and then we got some jokes, because I <laughs> secretly think Tim Duncan might be one of the funniest guys around. Uh, he got ejected for laughing. Yeah. I remember this. The bat. <laughs> Who doesn't remember this, George? <laughs> Manu taking care of business. I would never do that. Like, don't they carry lots of diseases and stuff? I mean, he don't like, care. He's just like, give me that bat. Ramona, we don't want, we don't want <laughs> uh, do perspective that. like that. We just want to count rings. Oh my God. Pop counting his rings. Oh, we talking ring. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.